What's up, Vinyl Community? It's your boy Chris coming at you live, as always, from the Man Cave. Um, been out of town for a few days, um, enjoying uh, basically what was uh, what, um, what amounted to our first family vacation. Um, myself, my wife, my daughter, um, and uh, beautiful Maggie Valley, uh, North Carolina, and the Smoky Mountains. I'm back now, back in the swing of things, getting there. Got to go back to work in the morning. <sighs> that sucks. Looking very much forward to it. Anyway. Uh, already checking my PTO. Let's <laughs> see when we'll be able to do it again. Cause, uh, anyway. Alright, so, because every now and then a few of you can give a shit what kind of beer I drink, and because uh, I'd actually very much love to plug this company anyway, uh, Bujum Brewing, King of the Mountain, double IPA. Uh, Bujum Brewing is a wonderful, uh, very family-oriented um, uh, brewery in uh, Waynesville, North Carolina, right outside of Maggie Valley, right outside of, probably, let's, let's call it 25 minutes, let's call it 25 minutes, I guess what would be east, no, west, 25 minutes, yeah, 25 minutes west about Asheville, North Carolina, and uh, about 40 minutes uh, west of uh, Maggie Valley, where we were staying, but uh, great. Uh, great place. Uh, we love it. Uh, full food menu. Great service. Uh, very important uh, for us dads. A uh, changing table in both the men's and women's bathrooms. Those places always win me over. I've had uh, several conversations with uh, breweries that didn't have changing tables. Like, hey guys, uh, you know, parents, parents drink beer too. You know, what we got to do to get a changing table? <laughs> I've done that. Uh, everybody's like, uh, well, you hate to be that guy. No, I don't. No, I don't. People have kids. More people other than just 19, you know, other than just, you know, 21 year olds straight in college drink beer. So, look us up. Especially craft beer places. We're, we're your main business. Guys my age and over, we're, we're your business. Anyway, this is Vinyl Channel. I digress. One of the great things about coming back from this particular vacation. Um, you always dread uh, coming back uh, from any vacation. Uh, we were gone by four and a half days, but I told my wife was, the fun, vacation has this funny effect. Um, it was about a three hour trip for us. So it has this funny effect of when you're leaving, when you're pulling out, you wanna turn around and go back, you don't wanna leave. About 30 minutes up the road, you, you like, you know, can we turn around and go back, please? We don't have to leave, do we? An hour and a half in, and you're just ready to be home. Get me out of this fucking car. I'm ready to be home. God damn it, please. Can we please be home? Uh, and then by the time you're home, you're just happy to be home. So it's got that weird effect. But one of the things that made, you know, getting back home a little better for me was I knew that there was going to be a box of fight, a box of jazz heat. Uh, for my boy at DJ Parry, my friend Marcus, uh, waiting on me when I got here. Uh, you know, we go out of town, we have animals, we have dogs, we have three cats. Excuse me. Still a habit. <laughs> we have a dog, we have two cats. And um, so we always have somebody looking after our animals. Dog got boarded, cats got fed. But uh, so I made sure I let uh, my mother in law know hey, if you see a box, <laughs> please stick him in the house, don't let my wax sit out in the heat. But anyway, here it is. Yeah, that is how we wagon wheel, guys. Me and my boy, no half stepping. Uh, okay, so some of the stuff in this box. This is why I like doing the unboxing videos because we do business over a couple of months at a time. So a lot, oftentimes, there's going to be stuff in this box I'm going to forget I ordered, or going to forget that I that I that I got. And because of that, you get the genuine reaction. So the unboxing videos are fun, in my opinion. Anyway. So, straight unboxing. I hadn't opened any of this. I hadn't looked at it. Again, obviously the biggest dogs, I'm going to remember. Everybody remembers the biggest dogs. But, let's see what we got. Probably be Thursday at the earliest. Probably listen to any of these, which sucks, but... It is what it is.
Thanks for the free medals, Marcus. <laughs> My boy filling out the box. All right, here we go. Shirley Scott in the Soul Saxes. King Curtis, Hank Crawford, David Newman. This is a promo copy. It's on Atlantic. Uh, this is one of the ones that you can put down for me is forgot that I got. <laughs> Tell you what. It's going to be so much easier. I'll just pull these records out of this box. No doubt about it. More mailers. Awesome. I would edit this, but you guys already know I don't do that. I ain't edited any damn thing. But anyway, so the Shirley Scott <laughs> in the Soul Sax is King Curtis, Hank Crawford, David Newman. Promo copy is on Atlantic. Because um, now we can talk about the records now that I've gotten all that sorted out. Yeah. White label promos. <laughs> very sexy, very cool. Uh, very happy to have that one. Right, next up, this is one that I had ordered from them a while back, and one of the ones I had absolutely not forgotten about in this box. Uh, Freddie Roach, Mo Greens, please. That's one of my all-time favorite album titles, period. Well, for one, because I'm a Southern boy, I love greens. I really do. I love collard greens. I love turnip greens. I just love greens. And then for two, I love jazz. And I love Freddie Roach and his albums. And it's got Conrad Lester on the tenor, Kenny Burrell on the guitar, Eddie Wright on the guitar, Clarence Johnston on the drums, and it is a, an original. Mono pressing. Of course, you guys know how I wagon wheel. Splat Owl. Blue Note label. Yeah. You know me, not wanting to show off. Um, anyway, great stuff. Very happy to have this album. I've been looking for it for a while. For a long while. Next up, uh, Zoot Sims, Waiting Game, On Impulse, Original Stereo. This particular one, Super Clean. Crisp Gatefold, you can tell. Hadn't been played very long, uh, very, uh, very many, uh, very often. Um, very similar, in my opinion, the gatefold to a love supreme. Very, very similar um, in terms of the uh, illustration and whatnot. Splat out! I gotta love that label. How can I open this? How can I open Impulse and not show the labels? It's not possible. It's not possible, and it's not gonna happen. Uh, arguably, the biggest rail in this box is coming next because I didn't pull it in any. A particular order and I know my boy uh, Marcus at DJ Party I know he's not putting it in there in any particular order but uh, arguably the biggest grill in this entire box okay all right the Ray Draper quintet it's on new jazz and it features the talents of the legendary who would have been 93 years old today John Coltrane once again on New Jazz. It is a goal of mine, obviously. I've told you guys before to own every record Train ever played on. Draper on the tuba, Train on the tenor, Gil Coggins on the piano, Spanky DeBrest on the bass, and Larry Ricci on the kit. And of course, I'm gonna show you the New Jazz label. You guys already know. Oh, uh, wagon wheel. New Jazz, so great, uh, this is a grail. Um, I've told several people about this one and they're like, is that a fucking tuba he's holding? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, tuba led jazz albums, not common. <laughs> uh, not common, so uh, you're not gonna see very many Ray Draper. I think he only, he was only the front man, I think on I think two or three albums I think I think I could be wrong so yeah tuba not a big thing in, in terms of front men and jazz but uh 
great album, rare album, one I'm very, 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 very psyched on. Next up, Cooking with the Miles Davis Quintet on Prestige. Um, okay, here's what's interesting. This is about my fourth copy of this. Um, the very first one I had was an OJC. I got an opportunity to upgrade to a first, um, to an early stereo. I think it was a Trident. So I took that. And then I got an opportunity to upgrade to an original mono in VG. And I took that. Even though, in my opinion, it played better than VG. And uh, then uh, my boy DJ Party uh, messages me the other day and says, Hey, how would you like to upgrade that cooking from a VG to a VG Plus? And this is one of my favorite jazz albums, so I couldn't resist. Straight up. So I sold my cooking for exactly what I paid for it. And got this one for just a little more. Couldn't be happier. And he's right. It's definitely a VG Plus. Bam. Splat out. Prestige. So uh, for those of you who follow all my videos, no doubt as soon as I pulled this one out, you guys were like, hey, I thought you already had that one. And I did. But as soon as I had an opportunity to get this one, sold the other one. And yeah, no doubt. Uh, good call, Marcus. VG Plus. Uh, always, 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 always upgrade your favorite albums. If you get a chance to upgrade for condition, God damn it, do it. Just do it. Just do it. You can't. There's. You can't possibly have a good enough copy in terms of condition of your favorite albums. I mean, if it's just some album you don't really give a damn about, and you got a good copy and you're happy with it, then leave it alone. But. For your absolute favorites, every time you get a chance to get a better condition copy and you can swing it, do it. Next up was one that uh, <laughs> uh, I got to admit, I got a good laugh about. Um, uh, so my boy uh, had messaged me and told me, he says, first off, before I send you the picture, ignore the cover. He goes, because the cover is silly. And he goes, I'm going to send you a sound sample. He goes, I still use this in my DJ sets. I'm like, okay. I didn't know what the hell he was going to send me in terms of the cover. But he sends it to me, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, Spanish Rice, Clark Terry, and Chico O'Farrell. Uh, yeah. So, Clark and Chico look like they're having a good old time. It's on Impulse. It's on Mono Press. And uh, I'll show you guys something even better about it in a minute. But listen to that crisp gatefold. Oh, man, it sounded like it was just being open for the very first time. So, it's Chico, a red drink conductor. Clark Terry, Snooky Young, Joe Newman, Ernie Royal on trumpets and flugelhorns, Barry Galbraith, Everett Barksdale on guitars, George DeVivier on bass, Grady Tate on drums, Julio Cruz, Frank, Malet Frank Malaby, I I'm not sure how you pronounce that name, Bobby Rosengarden, and Chano Pozo on Latin percussion. And this is from, this is recorded July 18th, 19th, and 20th of 1966. And What's very cool about this one, you guys ready? It is an Impulse white label promo. Bam. Splat out. My very first. Um, the Impulse white label promos are like a freaking unicorn. They are hard to find. You're going to have an extremely hard time finding these guys. Um, I saw... Uh, I saw a white label promo uh, mono, a Love Supreme, go for about fifteen hundred about two months ago, and I got to tell you guys, if I had fifteen hundred dollars, but I would have totally bought it. I'm just going to be completely real with you, but I don't have it, so it was a non-issue. But this is my very first impulse white label promo and the samples that he sent me from this album to sell it to me were funky as hell so I had to have it so it's definitely not going to be my usual uh, hard bop lane but uh, I do like my jazz funk every now and then to spice things up so I'd freak not next up Sonny Stitt Constellation with Barry Harris Sam Jones and Roy Brooks and it's on Cobblestone great album Anything Sunny Stitt, at least in my opinion, anyway. Uh, super clean cover. Cobblestone label. 
slept on. Very awesome. Album looks like it was barely freaking played. So uh, thank you, previous owner, either A, for taking very good care of your records, or B, not playing this one very much, because it's in my hands now, and it looks good as hell. Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting into a couple now that I did not, that I do not remember buying, <laughs> but it's okay. For sure, it was this first one. African Waltz. Cannonball Adderley in his orchestra on Riverside. First mono. Oh, excuse me. First stereo. My bad. Uh, Cannonball Adderley never made a bad record. It's a policy of mine to if I see an album with Cannonball Adderley's name on it for a reasonable price that I don't have to buy it. Because they're all good. 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 There are several jazz rules that I give people that I give novices. And one of the ones that I give people is, if it got Cannonball Adderley's name on it, buy it. Of course, right beside that gorgeous blue label. Ah, boy, I love jazz. Every album I throw on, I feel like I've got so much to learn. A lot of people I know feel like I know so much and ask me so much and question me so much and email me so much and text me so much and DM me so much, but every day I feel like I learn so much about this genre. And it's something I've never felt about music ever in my life. And man, that's 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 where the hook comes in. I gotta tell you. Yes. Uh, I really just I love this genre. I do. As if, you know, all of you guys watching right now are like, yeah, Chris, we know we, we fucking love jazz. You show it every goddamn video. <laughs> all right. Uh, this one I absolutely forgot buying, uh, but I'm happy to have. Uh, really Living, the uh, J.J. Johnson sex tip uh, with Nat Adderley, Bobby Jaspar, Cedar Walton, James. <laughs> James Spakey Depressed and Albert Heath. Great album. And it's best thing about this one, this particular, this particular press, of course, as I, I'm getting ready to show you guys, and you understand immediately. Is, wow! Oh God, I love those six I Columbia labels, original mono, beautiful. Can't wait to throw one on it. It's super, super duper, super, 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 super duper clean. Uh, next up, oh man, I'm getting ready to have some fun. Uh, New Wave. Dizzy Gillespie. Because that's, another, that's kind of another rule. Dizzy Gillespie was on and it's not bad. It's just... But here's another rule of mine that this is kind of counteracting with. And that rule is, is there shall be no shrink wrap on any album in the man cave. Oh man, this is going to be fun. You guys ready? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh boy, oh. do it again only slower, man, now it looks like an album, Dizzy Gillespie on the trumpet, Leo Wright on the alto and flute, Lalo Schifrin on the piano, Chris Wright on the bass, Ruby Collins on the drums, Bola Sate on the guitar, Jose Paula on guitar and tambourine, Carmen Costa on the cabasa, Charlie Ventura on tenor and bass saxophone. New Wave. This was. This on Mercury Records. It's a very good album, guys. Of course, I mean, just the name Dizzy Gillespie should make you want to buy it. It's one of the, you know, this man put together one of the great, you know, jazz careers ever. Um, I was asking my boy Marcus uh, who he thought had the greatest career in the history of jazz and no doubt that's a tough one. No doubt. And uh, I think he it was a tough one for him but he goes you know probably Duke Ellington. And um, you know because the longevity and you know so many great albums and so many like great collaboration albums and influenced so many great people and just yeah and he, you know what 
that's hard to argue with. It really just is. And the, and the decade, in the, uh, in the uh, excuse me, the uh, career lasted decades. It's just, that's really hard. That's hard to argue with. And I know you guys are probably wanting to know how I went from Dizzy to, to Duke, but I'm just random thinking out loud now. Because I was thinking about how great of a career Dizzy had, and then it made, reminded me of that conversation with my boy. And uh, But Dizzy's up there, though. Had a great career. And speaking of Dizzy, Diz Gillespie, half trumpet, will excite on Verve. Now, this is a really great album. I'm sure a lot of you guys, if you have any Dizzy at all, you probably have this one. Uh, personnel, Dizzy on the trumpet, obviously, Junior Mance on the piano, Laspawn on the flute and guitar, Sam Jones on bass, Lex Humphreys on the kit. Somebody was kind enough to leave their name and address on the back. I can't read the shit, though, so thank God they can't write. <laughs> hmm, I see that now. Okay. Gonna need some of those strips. Good thing I got that covered. The wax is super duper clean though on Verve. Verve label is also one of my favorites. So I'll fix that. But looking very much forward to the album. Uh, I really, 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 really dig Dizzy. Next up, Miles Davis Jazz Track. Um, original mono on Columbia. I promise I'll show you as soon as I take a sip of my beer. Anyway. Moss Davis Jazz Track. Original mono. Pretty damn clean. Honestly. Sorry guys, I got caught reading this. <laughs> I didn't mean to leave you hanging. Uh, no doubt, uh, you guys are probably familiar with Jazz Track. Um, it's got some um, side one, of course, is the uh, music from the uh, French film uh, that uh, Miles did the uh, soundtrack to. I cannot pronounce that. I'm sorry, I cannot. I took French in seventh grade. I did. I took French in seventh grade because I thought it was a beautiful language. And then after seventh grade, I was like, what the hell am I doing? I don't know anybody that speaks French. I don't. So I switched to Spanish. Because <laughs> I know plenty of people that speak Spanish. And because I did that, uh, it looked good on the college resume. And uh, not most importantly, you know, made me relatively fluent with, uh, with a few Spanish people in the future that I come to work with and call friends. So it, it, it definitely served its purpose. So don't take French, take Spanish. <laughs> anyway, you're better off taking Chinese than taking French. True story. Um, the Donald Bird, The Third World, Donald Bird and Booker Little, excuse me. Uh, Stereo Press. I really just think that's a cool album cover. Personally, uh, I've longed to have every album Donald Bird ever played on, and I'm getting there, honestly. Uh, this one, oh man, what's that disgusting shit that's on this album? What's this disgusting this? Oh my god, it's shrink wrap. Oh my god, it has to go. It has to die. Painful death. Yes, it does. Um, yeah, now it looks like an album. Man, awesome stuff. My first album on the uh, TCB label, Stereo Press. Super clean, doesn't look like it was ever played. Uh, so, God bless him. Uh, features the talents of, of course, Donald Byrd, Booker Little, Curtis Fuller, Bill Evans, Paul Chambers, Mondo Perrazzo, Philly Joe Jones, and Louis Rodriguez. What a fucking lineup, man. So, uh, Plenty of you watching this, no doubt, are not familiar with this album. So, uh, all I got to say to you is if you see it, jump on it, jump on it, jump on it. Sorry, didn't squeeze that in in the last video, so I had to make sure I hit you guys up this time. <laughs> Alright, next up. Sunny Stit. Second Sunny Stit in the stack. Second Sunny Stit in the stack. Man, that's some alliteration for y'all ass, isn't it? Second Sunny Stit and Stack. Second Sunny Stit and Stack. Say that shit three times fast. But I did.
Anyway, Sunny Stick, little green apples. I, another one that I had forgotten I'd ordered. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Anyway, let's stop pussyfooting around and show you guys the album. I know you guys aren't just around to see me shoot the shit or just around to see me say Tonto jump on it or just around to see me uh, <laughs> ramble and drink beer. I mean, obviously you guys were around for all of those things. I mean, why would you not show up for that? But anyway. Very clean all the way around. Super clean copy. Solid state records. Stereo press. Uh, subsidiary, of course, of uh, Liberty Imperial. I mean, yeah. Subsidiary of a lot of different labels. But a great album. So much good jazz, guys. I've, I mean, I'm back to all of this. All of this you see here. All of that. All of that. And several stacks I got over here. All jazz records I haven't had an opportunity to listen to. <sighs> A busy man. Anyway. Next up, Straight Up by Harold Dick. Can I tell you guys a couple of things that's great about this? Number one, this is a great and underappreciated record. Number two, it comes with most shrink wrap, most shrink wrap, most shrink wrap for that ass. And I get the bam, there it goes. Bam, yep. Well, get that ridiculous stuff off there. Why do you people leave it on there? I don't understand you. Everybody has a preference, but I don't get it. Personnel Harold Vick, leader, tenor sax, soprano sax, and flute, Virgil Jones on the trumpet. Al Daly on the kit, oh, excuse me. Al Daly, Al Daly on the keys. Warren Shazon on the uh, vibes. Everett Barksdale on the guitar. Walter Booker on the bass, and Hugh Walker on the drums. And it's on RCA Victor. Splat out. So, oh my God, super clean. I can't wait to get into it. I did indeed remember buying that one. <laughs> Next up, uh, I've only got a couple more left in the stack. Yeah, a few more left in the stack. Next up, uh, anything this man has his name on, I want. Um, my boy DJ Party has been made aware of that, and uh, it's coming through quite nicely. West 42nd Street, Kimmy Dorham. Stereo Press. All International. I long, long, long to own, to own everything. Kenny Dorham was on. Kenny Dorham on trumpet. Rocky Boyd on tenor. Walter Bishop on keys. Ron Carter on bass. Pete LaRocca on the kit. Of course, I love Pete LaRocca. Can't wait to spin this one. Jacket's a little flimsy. It's international. Um, wax is immaculate. Man, I can't wait to spin that. That's going to be great. Basically, everything on this stack, even the ones I forgot about, are all freaking heaters. Next up, Elmo Hope Trio with Jimmy Bond and Frank Buck. Another great thing about it is it comes with more shrinky shrink wrap and deuces. Deuces, 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 deuces. Alright. Now it looks like a record. Contemporary stereo. So this is going to be a very first stereo pressing, very similar uh, to my Leroy Vinegar, uh, Leroy Walks that I got, uh, that I showed off in, I think, two videos ago. Very much, very much, very much, very much looking forward to it. This is my first Elmo Hope led record. Uh, Elmo Hope, of course, on the keys, Jimmy Bond on the bass, Frank Butler on the kit. Very, very much looking forward to it. And to close this video out, uh, yeah, this is one I absolutely forgot about. Child of Gemini, the Roland Hanna Trio. Of course, I know who Roland Hanna is. I know all that. I know the album. But I forgot that I bought it. <laughs> so, hey. Okay, fold. Roland Hanna on the keys. Dave Holland on the bass. Daniel Humeyer on the drums. Uh, 
Great stuff. Highly recommended, honestly. And the album almost looks like a form for us. I'm not sure whether or not it is or not. Great stuff. Stereo press. Very much looking forward to it. Obviously. So that completes uh, the package, the unboxing of uh, Fire that I got from my boy DJ Parry, Marcus, my friend. And um, man, let's just say I think I've got one day off all week to listen to jazz. During that week, during that day, obviously I'm going to have several hours with errands. So I'll probably have the turntable to myself. Let's call it three or four good hours. So that's what, about four of those. So no matter what, I'm always playing catch up to that. And not to mention, there's more. You just because, I mean, just because that's all you guys ever see doesn't mean that's all I have. I got that, I got that, I got that. Yeah, that's what my best shit is, though. <laughs> anyway. Well, let's hope I can knock a few of them off. Uh, Marcus, man, I hope you're right. I hope I live long enough to retire to get to enjoy all these. God damn, man, I hope you're right. I swear I hope you're right. Um, if you're right, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll drive up to your place. I'll buy you the biggest bottle of bourbon, bro. It's on me. I hope you're right. Um, so, great vacation with my family. Very, very, very awesome to come home to a box of jazz. He does. Uh, waiting in my living room for me. That was great. Uh, the only thing, you know, technically, you know, when I grabbed the box, I was still on vacation. So that ended the vacation. Well, I just wish I had time to listen to them. But uh, that time's probably not coming until Thursday. So until next time, until next video. Keep dropping it to you, you guys. Careful, girl. You guys be careful. He's going to come right back around through here. Watch him. Look. Look, Ramona. Here he comes again. Right here. <laughs>